Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at my Necros deck. Now I know a lot of people have asked for this and I've been very interested in trying to build this deck. Because it's so brand new, uh, my build's going to be experimental, going to be using a lot of things that other deck builders have been using. There's a pretty um, normal skeleton for this deck, not a lot of uh, different choices, but there are a few different things. I'll try to bring that up um, during the deck. But because it's new to me and because I'm still messing with it, this will be pretty much a work in progress. But for a first build and for how strong the deck type is, I think it'll do pretty well. And I'll kind of talk about what you're trying to do here. It's a ritual focus deck, but it's um, a little bit different in the fact that it's so consistent. It has ritual monsters that have secondary effects. Um, you can discard them and do a lot of different things. There's a ton of consistency with the deck, which is ending up making it extremely powerful. And it also tries to lock down and limit what your opponent can do. So I'll kind of talk about how we're doing that and how the cards kind of accomplish that. So before we get into the Necros cards, um, I just want to talk about some of the other tech that we're going to be using in this deck. Uh, Releaser of Rituals is really nice for this deck because you can kind of lock down your opponent. A lot of people are concerned about the mirror match. I don't build my decks necessarily to go against specific types of deck against the meta. I try to build just an overall strong deck. But when you're going up against the mirror, it's something that people like to do is lock down special summons with this deck, which can be extremely powerful in combination with some of the other things you're trying to do. We're also running three Manju, three Senju. Usually Senju isn't as powerful because in a ritual focus deck, you kind of have to balance between the ritual monsters and the ritual spells. But because this deck has so much consistency with the ritual monsters, because of their secondary effects, because they're searching, because of all that stuff that's going on, you can run Senju and Manju and they pretty much work the same way because of how consistent the cards play off each other. So between that, just really a lot of great consistency. And then we're running three Shuret. Um, this is kind of a debate. Some people run like two or three. It really depends on what you're trying to do. This allows you to make some nice plays. It's very similar to kind of Gish Keys, but it also gives you some additional power to search out and get what you need. Now to get into the ritual, some of the really powerful things that we can do with this deck type. So Bryonic is very, very powerful. Very similar to, um, you know, Bryonic, the normal synchro monster, which is kind of a theme with these uh, Necros cards. And it also has some more consistency that you can search out. Um, that's going to be a big thing with our deck type. And then um, two Klesalos. So this one's, again, similar to the Mistbird, allowing you to kind of deal with an opponent's card. But again, this gives you some, some consistency to search out those uh, spell cards. So you can get what you want with this card or just use it to put an annoying presence on the field. One Decisive Armor. This one is um, kind of an attack bonus card, so like Kalut, you know, things like that. Um, getting him out will be not super tricky, but it's it won't be as normal to get him out. But I still like being able to go over things. That can be very useful. Some people run more of this. Some people don't run it at all. I think one is kind of fine for this deck type. And then one Gungner. Again, this one, um, not as consistent because of its level and because of some of the things you're trying to do. Still, you can use this to kind of protect yourself and obviously do, you know, like Gungner's effect allows you to deal with opponent's cards. And then Trishula, um, you know, again, just another one of the rituals that you don't want to run so much. I've seen some people run more of this, but I feel like with its level again and with its effect, it's kind of situational. It can still be pretty powerful getting it out and doing some plays and kind of locking your opponent down. But I think you have to really kind of consider how you're bringing it out and how consistent it'll be depending on, you know, what your deck is trying to do. And then running three Unicor, pretty much staple because he's level four, just works out really nicely with some of the things you're trying to do and can make really nice plays for you and then recycle from the graveyard and the other things that, again, more consistency from the Necros, pretty uh, standard. And then three Valkyrus. I think some people are running this at two. I'm currently running it at three. Another uh, pretty powerful card that you can kind of use to bring over your opponent. Very nice attack, very nice effects, um, just works out really well. And now for the spell cards, no traps in this deck um, because of how the deck is so focused on its monsters and the cards that support it. So we're going to be running two Dark Hole. In this deck, we have so much consistency and protection and other things that we can run a lot of Dark Hole and blow up our opponent's cards and still just make things really powerful. Three MST, obviously back row can be somewhat of an issue, so it's good to have MST. And then two of each of the um, Necros um, spell cards. They're extremely powerful, and they're all very unique in how they work, so we're running two of each. There's Kaleidoscope that goes from the um, extra deck if you want, Cycle from the Graveyard. They all have a lot of different consistency. You can kind of swarm out with certain things as well. So um, you want to have kind of a variety between them because of how different you can use them and how great they are. And if, if you're able to search them out, you can search out whatever you need depending on your situation and what you have in your hand. So again, the consistency comes in really he heavily there. Preparation of Rites. We have so many low-level rituals. This card is just so powerful for this deck. 
when Regeki won Snatch Deal, just again, staple powerful cards that work out nicely. For the extra deck, we're going to be running two Herald of Arc Light, um, one shooting Quasar Dragon, one shooting Star Dragon, one Star Eater. Keep in mind the levels. Because of Kaleidoscope, we could do some interesting things here. Our, obviously, Arc Light at level 4 plays really nicely, especially with the fact that you can, again, get advantage from sending this card to the graveyard. So I think this card is kind of designed for this deck, which is just really, really nice. And obviously with the higher level cards, we're using them to make out those um, Necros plays, which just, again, works out really well. The levels that you're using is kind of up to you, depending on kind of how many cards you're running and what consistency you want. It's something you just have to take a look at for yourself and debate. Otherwise, mostly, you know, standard rank 4 is Abyss Dweller. We do have some level 4 water, so we can do some things there. Castell, Pitalemi, don't run too many rank 6s, but you can run like 1 if you want. Uh, Degusto Emerald, Diamond Air Wolf, Exaton, Gaga Cowboy, Gaia Dragon, just in case, you know, with our rank 6. Lavalo Chain, obviously, you can see the power of that in this deck type in Silent Honor. So now for the side deck, if you haven't seen a video of mine before, on the side deck I kind of just talk about other recommended cards, other ideas, not really a side deck for matches, I just want people to think about other cards that could be useful. Dance Princess is a pretty good card for this deck type, it's just situational, so it's up to you. Effect Veiler can be useful for this deck. Gishki Chain could be useful because of the such high amount of ritual stuff we have, but we have so much consistency that doesn't matter that much. Maxi, obviously. Tour Guide, if you run more of the Jins, you can run Tour Guide and just do plays off that. There are some OCG cards, I'm not going to talk too much about them, but I do want people to know that with the uh, Zephyr cards and there's some other things that will be happening in the future that maybe we'll want to take a look at. Some people run Book of Eclipse, Book of Moon. This is, a, again, for the mirror match. If you want to deal with the lockdown, you can run things like that. Again, I'm not focusing so heavily on the mirror match, so I'm not running that. Hidden Armory to search out Snatch Deal. You don't really need to normal summon very much in this tech type, so that works out nicely for us. Pot of Dichotomy, um, depending on your different cards, you can use this really well. Reinforce of the Army, if you want to search out um, Sroot, that's another thing you could do. Salvage with our low attack water monsters. Very useful if you want. And Toriantal Reborn, just an interesting card that you can run in this deck. Um, just, you know, a weird thing that you can do if you want to throw it in here. It can work uh, well for this deck type. So that's my Necros deck. Um, a very uh, powerful, strong deck type that looks like it's going to be really crazy because of the fact that it just has so much consistency. You could already see the prices on this deck are insane because of how great it's looking. Um, again, I'm very new to the deck type, so definitely looking forward to people giving me tips. If you have your own Necros deck, you could post below. Let me know in the comments. As I get more familiar with it, as I have more fun with it, I'm going to keep updating it and changing it around, but I do hope you guys like the build. If you are a fan of my videos, if you like what I do, you can subscribe, hit the like button, share my video, all that cool stuff. Or um, if you want to support me, you can hit the donate button. You can donate to my channel and help me produce content. That helps me out as well. Also, if you're interested in other decks that I've built, you can take a look at the decks buttons at the end of the videos. You know, if you want to see recent decks or all my decks or anything like that. But that's about it for me today. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you later.